So the next thing we're going to do is return to our storyboard. Do that through the browse page. I'll double click and open that up. And then maybe we'll have a look at our table of contents. And okay, we've had a look at collaboration. So we'll go to storyboard. Now storyboard is the tool that I've been using throughout this session. And it's a presentation layer in Yellowfin, much like Dashboard is a presentation layer. But basically it's designed like a slideshow, but it allows you to incorporate live content into that rather than having a tool, uh, a presentation tool where you have to test, take screenshots of all the reports and so on. So if I navigate through here, when you're presenting a storyboard, you can use several different methods. So I could use my keyboard arrows to navigate backwards and forwards. Um, you'll just have to take my word for it that I'm pressing the keys there. Uh, you can use the slide arrows. So we can use these arrows on the side here to nav navigate backwards and forwards. We can also slide around. And this gives us a little snapshot into, okay, I'm actually going to navigate to a particular slide now. And finally, you can use the table of contents, which we just did. Now, when you're accessing a storyboard that's active, like this one is, you can do a lot of things with it. So you can share it with other users. So you can click this share button at the bottom and you can send it via email or via someone's timeline uh, to another user. You can export that to PDF if you want. You can add it as a favourite, which means it'll show up in your favourites list that we looked at earlier. And alternatively, you can filter it if any of the reports contain filters. And finally, you can add comments, which we've also already had a look at. So that's storyboard at its most basic form. We're going to learn how to build storyboards in one of the other sessions. Um, today we're just really learning on how to use pre-existing content. So now we're going to explore report actions. So much like storyboard, what can I do with an active report? So to start out with, we have things called bookmarks and snapshots. Now, when we went to a report with filters earlier, we were able to filter that report down and use breadcrumbs to change those filter values and things like that. But bookmarks and snapshots take it a step further. So bookmarks actually allow you to save a filter preset um, so you can say, oh, look, I always want to see um, my female athletes between the ages of 0 and 24 um, in a particular year. And you can save that set. And the next time you review the report, you can just quickly open it up rather than having to select all the individual values again. When it comes to snapshots, snapshots are a little bit different in that they're actually uh, saving the results in the report rather than saving a filter preset. So snapshots are a slightly more advanced option and as a consumer you may not always have access to that option depending on the system. But basically it allows you to say, okay, take a picture of this report at this point in time and let me see it down the track. But once you do take that snapshot, you can't filter the snapshot, you can't drill on it or anything like that. It becomes what we call static. It, it, it uh, is like a little picture, so you can't manipulate it in any way. Uh, and that's because when you come back and view that data again, so you view that report again, um, what it's actually doing is looking at the data from a month ago or whenever you took the snapshot and it's not actually going off to your database and getting fresh data so it has no way of filtering and stuff but if that's too technical for you don't worry basically it's just taking a picture in one point in time and letting you revisit it later if you need to 
Okay, so next we have email broadcasts and this is a, a very uh, commonly used feature and what it does is allows you to schedule what we call a broadcast of a report and that basically means the system will automatically email a copy of the report either as like a PDF or various different formats to users that you define. And it will do that periodically. So it'll do that based on a schedule that you set up. Uh, so you might have it once a month, once a week, once a day, depending on the type of data. Uh, and Yellowfin will just automatically do that for you. So it'll automatically send those out. Next, we have what we call delivery rules. And these are kind of an advanced broadcasting option. And what this does is you still set up the schedule and you still say who you want the report to go to. But what it will do is it'll, when it runs the schedule, so say it's once a month, on that day every month when it's supposed to email the report out, it will check the report and it will say, okay, does the report match the rule that my user has set up? If it does, it will send the report. If it doesn't, it won't send the report. And then it will just wait until the next month and repeat. So a really common use for this might be um, if you have a daily target, so a sales target or something, you may automatically want to send reports to managers at the end of the day if the sales target wasn't met. So if your sales value is less than your target value. So what Yellowfin will do is it'll look at the report, it'll look at your sales figure in the report and it'll say, is this less than the target figure that's also in the report? If it is, send the email. So tell that manager that they didn't meet the target. If it's not, so if they have met the target, don't worry about sending it, they don't need to know they've done a great job. So that's what a delivery rule is. So it's basically just a way of saying only send on the schedule if this happens. And finally, we have sort of another variation on that, which is called a smart task. And instead of emailing based on a delivery rule, we create a task based on the delivery rule. So we still set up a schedule. We still set up a delivery rule, but instead of emailing the report, we set up a task. And a common use for this, and this might get a little technical, so don't worry, um, but a common use for this might be, okay, you, you want to automatically check the data and make sure it's updated correctly. So you might set up a schedule once a week for directly after the data is meant to be refreshed and say, check the data. If it's been refreshed, don't create a task. But if it hasn't, create a task for the administrator so they know something went wrong. Um, so that's sort of the basics of it. Um, and we'll have a look at how to create those now. So we'll just leave this storyboard once more. And we'll change this back to thumbnails because that's the way I like to view. <laughs> and I might actually go to the dashboard. So we might go to our drill report and have a look at this one here. Okay, so what I can do, actually, we might even have a look at one of our charts so it's a little bit more visual. So we're going to go to this report here and you'll see on the left I have this little item here so let's just reset our filters and I have this little item here which is a bookmark and if I hover over that it's telling me okay I want to filter it to female youth in 2015 and 16. So if I click on that you can see those values have been applied to my filters. And if I close that, you can see it in the, in the breadcrumbs here. So maybe I want to change that. Maybe I want it to be my male athletes. So say I've set up all my filters and I'm really happy with those. What I can do is create a bookmark. 
and say I want to see male youth 0 to 24 and I just give it a few details so I'll give it a little name might even remove that And so I've given it a name which is going to help my users pick it and then I've given it a description. So anytime this report is accessed, let's just reset the filters. I come to the report and I can say, oh, I can see my male youth athletes or I can see my female athletes. So I'll go the male group. I could change that to female and it's just going to apply those bookmarks for me. Now if I wanted to, I could create a snapshot and I'd just give it a name and description again. Oh, so we're actually seeing female youth on the 4th of the 4th. So we know when this was taken. And then when we come to the report, we can see this snapshot and we can return to that or we can return to the live report if we want to. Okay, so that's bookmarks and snapshots. The next thing we'll look at is broadcasting. So we just open this broadcast and you can see we have one already created here, but we'll create a new one. <clears throat> And basically I define my recipients, so I might send this to Sammy. So I'll give it a name, I'll give the email a uh, description. I'll say how I want it to be sent, so perhaps I want it as PDF. I can use one of my bookmarks. And I can say, do I want it to be a continuous schedule or do I want it to be based on a delivery rule? So we'll go with delivery rule. And we can say, all right, look, only show us the data if the invoice is less than 10,000. Okay, so we submit that. And we'll set it to be a monthly send we'll send it to be the last day of the month if the month doesn't have 31 days it will automatically do the 30 or the 29 or 28 depending on which month and we'll submit that all right so we've now got two broadcasts sitting there and they will run automatically and alternatively we can set up a smart task and this is done exactly the same way all right so we'll just leave our report now and we'll return once again to our storyboard and we'll navigate to the end. All right, so in review, we've completed our consumer level training. So what you should be able to do now is you should be familiar with Yellowfin and what it does. Um, you will have learnt how to navigate the system and access content. Uh, you'll be able to interact with content collaborate with other users. Um, you'll know how to basically use Storyboard. Uh, that doesn't include creation, that comes later. And you'll know what to do with a finished report. So the next step in your Yellowfin training is the basic content writer session. So complete that one next. And what it will do is walk you through the initial steps of creating uh, various content in the system. You'll start creating reports and charts as well as very basic uh, dashboards and storyboards. So until then, enjoy Yellowfin. <laughs>